Hey YouTube, what's going on? Guy 29 coming at you with another edition of Iowans in the Majors. Uh, today we're going to take a look at a card I just received I'm really excited about. Um, especially for the price I paid. Uh, a card I've never owned before uh, from this set. And uh, I think it's beautiful. Uh, you don't need to listen to me. Let's go ahead and take a look here. There is... The 1909 to 11 American Carmel Company, E91, George Stone, the no hands visible virtual, uh, version. Uh, as you can see, uh, very reminiscent of cards of that era in their size and look. Um, I think the colors uh, look really good on this one. Um, obviously, it's in rough shape. You got a nice big crease across the corner there. Rounded edges, of course, but they're that way a little bit anyway, so I'm not too worried about that. This got a one SGC. Um, was ecstatic to get this. Go ahead and show you the back. There's our baseball caramels. There was a hundred subjects in the series out of Philadelphia. Now you can see there's a little writing down in the bottom corner. I'm not sure exactly. It says E90 on it, so somebody wrote down what said it was from uh, but this is George Stone and George Stone was born in Lost Nation Iowa which uh, is over on the eastern side of the state uh, about 45 minutes from uh, Cedar Rapids Dubuque Clinton the Quad Cities area so far eastern Iowa and uh, played uh, in the majors 1903 and then again 05 through 1910. Um, broke into the majors uh, with the Boston Americans in 1903. Only had two plate appearances. Uh, struck out both times um, in, in, the, in that season. Was then sent to Milwaukee. Uh, of I think it was the Western League at that time. And uh, oh, let's see. Of the American Association. I'm sorry. I'll come back to the other parts of it. But uh, then he went on to play uh, all of 1905 uh, through 1910 with the St. Louis Browns. And he had uh, was a really good player uh, for a short career that he had. And we'll get into a little few more of his specifics here uh, as we go through. Was a career 301 hitter. Um, swiped, uh, where I just, I wrote it down and I wrote it in the wrong spot. But... Uh, 132 career stolen bases, 268 RBIs, 23 career homers, 68 triples, uh, 984 hits during his career. Uh, he had 3,669 plate appearances uh, during the, the span of his career. So uh, not, a bad, not a bad career at all. But uh, as I said, he was born in Lost Nation. Uh, in, on September 3rd of 1877. And uh, as a youngster, went to work in Coleridge, Nebraska. I couldn't really find why he moved to Coleridge, but he did. And was there, was working as a clerk, and in a game uh, in, as a 16-year-old, uh, had five hits and, and hit three home runs and decided, maybe I should take baseball a little more seriously. Uh, in 1902, he played with both Peoria and Omaha, in the Western League and led that circuit with 198 hits. Uh, he was then purchased by the Boston Americans where he debuted on April 20th of 1903. Uh, that time was short-lived um, and he was uh, farmed out to the Milwaukee Brewers of the American Association uh, who was managed and owned by Hugh Duffy at that time. Uh, in 1904 he stayed with that, the Brewers and he uh, Hit 406, had 254 hits in the year. Uh, and the, the Washington Post claimed he's so highly regarded in Milwaukee that the press there claims he's the premier hitter in the world right now. Um, so I thought that was kind of funny. Uh, but he, he spent the rest of that year in the minors. In 05, uh, he made an immediate impact with the St. Louis Browns. And... Uh, Led the American League in at-bats, hits, and total bases. 
Uh, he was considered to be a clever bunter as well as a clean hitter, and his speed allows him to beat out an infield fumble, uh, is how one sports writer termed it. Uh, he covers a great deal of territory and is a reliable fielder. You know, not glowing, but certainly above average, I'd say. Uh, his batting style was very odd, they say. He had a really low crouch, and he left the bat on his shoulder. And when they asked why he did that, he said it put his eyes on the line with where the ball was coming at him. And the crouch also allowed his muscles to chop down at the ball instead of taking a big, long swing like so many of his contemporaries did. Uh, he was 5'9", 175 pounds um, during his playing days. And in 1906, had by far the best season of his career. And some said the best season that's never remembered. Um, in 1906, uh, at the age of 28, he set a career high in hits, triples, and stolen bases. He also won the American League batting title, uh, out hitting Nap Lajoie. Uh, he hit 358 that year. Uh, but he had a really funny comment, at, or not funny, but a strange comment at the end of the season to the Sporting Life. And he said, I realize that each year I continue in baseball, that it sets me back just that much further in a business career. I'm still a young man and believe it should be the ambition of every young man to get into business for himself. No, in a few years, you'll see me hustling for myself back in my Nebraska home, trying to work up a business that by and by will work for me. Well, eventually he did that. Uh, we'll get to that in a little bit. In 07, he held out. Uh, he wanted to be paid $5,000, uh, and he didn't show up until just before the season, and it worked. Uh, they met his demands, but the crowd, uh, they say, got all over him every time he failed to produce for this, the hometown Browns. Um, as I said, he played till uh, 1910 um, and then fell off. Uh, his batting uh, started to suffer. He had an arm injury um, and then a leg injury, which really hurt his speed and didn't allow him to beat out those hits. Um, he returned to Milwaukee Brewers in 1911, where he hit just 282, but injuries forced him to retire after just 12 games of the 1912 campaign. Uh, going to spend time attending to business in Nebraska, he said. Uh, he went back and started working in the banking industry in Coal Ridge, Nebraska. Uh, he owned the Western League franchise in Lincoln, Nebraska, in 1916. And in 1940, moved to Clinton, Iowa, where he passed away on January 3rd, 1945. So, uh, as you can tell, a little excited to have this card. Uh, love having this uh, in my collection. Need to get a display put up showing all of the cards uh, from my Iowa Iowans in the majors. But hope you enjoyed this little look into uh, this brief history of George Stone, Lost Nation, Iowa. Till next time, remember, collect what you love, love what you collect.